What's going on guys, it's Hi with the Upper Left USA, and check out what I recently got my hands on, Kodak T-Max P3200. If you've never heard of P3200 before, that's likely because this film was actually discontinued back in October of 2012, and recently brought back at the end of March of 2018, and a lot of people seem to be pretty excited about that. I personally don't get around to shooting a lot of high speed films, so this was not a film in motion that I've actually tried before, even prior to the discontinuation. I mean, check it out. I own a roll of Ilford Delta 3200, but this thing has been sitting around for months. I just don't get around to shooting too much film at night, so I've just never really had an occasion to use such a high speed film. But I figured since P3200 was so well received in the past and is so hyped right now, I thought I'd take the time and force myself to try this roll out to see how I feel about it. T-Max P3200 is actually a multi-speed film, meaning that it was intended to be used and can be used at multiple speeds. That's actually what the P in the name stands for, pushed, and knowing that fact alone you can kind of already tell what this film was actually made for. If you look at the technical data sheet for this film, it actually shows that you can pull this film from 400 and push it all the way up to 25,000, with 800 being the nominal speed. But if you just think about it, from 400 to 25,000, that is quite an insane range. And I think that's where this film sets itself apart. Of course you can push and pull any other film on the market, but that doesn't mean that they'll hold up as well, especially when you're pushing 3, 4, 5 stops like P3200 was designed to do. Now let's take a look at some of the photos I was able to get while experimenting with this film. Personally, if I were to use an ultra high speed film like P3200, I would be using it at night to do night photography. And that's exactly what I did during the first part of my testing with this film stock. I took this film out with me to my local waterfront and tried to get some photos with the available ambient light. It should be noted that I was shooting at 3200 for this entire roll. Shooting in this kind of environment proved to be too much for ISO 3200. I really should have pushed the film even further to get some extra light sensitivity because I was at f2 the entire time with the shutter speed, often going down to 1 30th or 1 15th of a second. Kodak actually markets this film as being high speed with fine grain. I personally never take a manufacturer seriously when they say that their film has fine grain because it's all subjective and relative. What I find to be grainy, you may not. That being said, I do personally find that this film is very grainy, but really what can you expect when shooting a 3200 speed film? Again, you can push this film way past 3200, but pushing film does have some side effects. Kodak mentions in the technical data sheet that when pushing to 3200 or 6400, there will be an increase in both contrast and grain. There will also be an additional loss of shadow detail. This is all pretty standard when pushing film, but you just have to remember that pushing P3200 would very likely yield better results than taking something like a 400 speed film and pushing it to 3200 or 6400. For the next part of my test, I decided to do something that I'm a little bit more used to, and that is taking some tattoo portraitures. To do this, I went to the needle lounge to take some photos of the artist and the tattoo that he was doing. This is something that I typically do with every new film that I try and at this point, I tend to know what I can get. When I normally do this kind of photography, with a 400 speed film, I can usually close down to f4 and shoot at around 1 30th or 1 60th of a second. In this shoot with 3200 speed film, I was able to open up to f8, f16, and everywhere in between that I wanted. I was also able to play with the shutter speed much more easily than before. This is all expected, but being able to do this in practice was tremendously appreciated. The only thing that I didn't like about shooting P3200 in a portrait scenario is the amount of grain that you get. Again, it's ISO 3200 film, so it has a lot of grain and that's expected, but I'm still going to complain about it. For me personally, I just feel that it's too much for a portrait shoot, but who knows, you may like the grainy portrait look. I know a lot of people who actually add grain in post to get a similar look, so whatever floats your boat. And that was my experience with Kodak T-Max P3200. Personally, this is not a film for me, just because like I said at the beginning of this video, I just don't get around to shooting ultra high speed films like this too often, so they just end up sitting around. But that doesn't mean that this type of film isn't appreciated, and it can be extremely helpful and handy in certain situations. I may even consider keeping a couple rolls of this around for those situations where there just isn't enough ambient light, and for me personally that would be the best use for this type of film. Of course P3200 isn't just good for dimly lit scenes or night photography. 
It can of course be used for action shots with fast shutter speeds, hand holding telephoto lenses, and of course when you need a large aperture with fast shutter speeds. Needless to say, there are a lot of possible uses for this film. As previously mentioned, optimal speed for this film is 800, but I assume people who buy this film stock would probably be pushing it way beyond that. Honestly, I doubt that there are many people who actually read the technical data sheet to know that it can go that low, and they probably would go straight to 3200. I personally am pretty interested in seeing what this film can do at 800 and 1600, because I find those speeds to be more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. So. I may consider just keeping this film stock around for those specific applications. But even for those applications, I find it hard to consider using P3200 because it's quite expensive. At $9 a roll, it's a lot more feasible to use this film at 3200 and beyond just because it holds up better. At $3 to $5 a roll, HP5, Delta 400, Tri-X, and T-Max 400 can be pushed to 800 and 1600 for a much lower price. But again, for those who care, P3200 may give better results as it is a specialized film developed for pushing. Even though this T-Max P3200 isn't necessarily for me, I would say that if you have the slightest of interest in this type of film, to just pick it up and try it out for yourself because it could be an extremely helpful film to have in your arsenal. After trying out this P3200, I'm really left to wonder what this Ilford Delta 3200 can do. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below and tell me if I should try it out. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, comment down below with any questions or thoughts that you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content to come because there will be a lot more to come. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.